all been there, right? You've got your drink, right? you've got your snack ready, you're in the right mood to be able to watch a movie, but it has to be something that everybody wants to watch, and apparently not everybody wants to rewatch Legally Blonde over and over again. Weird. I don't I don't get it. So you look for like a sci-fi and action or space movie or something, but dang, these are looking grim, like everything is so bleak. This is definitely not the fun escapism that you want from a movie. When every movie depicted in the future is grim, brutalist architecture with neon lights, smog, rain, often running under fascism with people eating cockroach slime, you're not really in for a good time, are you? What is with this? Is the only future imaginable dystopian? Like, are these movies meant to be a warning to inspire us to make change and to make us grateful for what we have? Because the only thing that I actually get from it is sad. It doesn't make me grateful for what I have because I just see like the future that we're heading towards on screen, like right there. A lot of times I'm actually kind of reflecting the way that things are right now and it's not fun. So you're reconsidering? We've actually straight up stopped watching futuristic movies because they just make us feel so drained afterwards. And I don't actually think that we're alone because this actually won in the polls. I was not expecting this one to get as many votes as it did. So clearly there is an appetite for change. Pay attention Hollywood and also maybe just pay your writers. Zero tolerance policy applies to all citizens. You must report immediately to your parole officer. Thank you, no, thank you. Let's have a look at the state of movies and TV. So sci-fi or futuristic movies and TV shows, they tend to be dystopian, right? Most often these movies fall under the cyberpunk genre, which is a genre of science fiction set in a lawless subculture of an oppressive society dominated by computer technology. This has kind of taken over our vision of the future when it comes to cinema and TV. When I type in the phrase futuristic dystopian movies, you get so many of the hits over the past 20 years. I wanted to see what happened when I typed in futuristic hopeful movies. Um, the pickings were very slim, to say the least. Uh, I found some websites, um, and Jurassic Park got put up there, and I'm so what? I thought the whole thing was just because they can doesn't mean they should. And I'm sorry, but anybody recommending people to watch Jupiter Ascending is a sadist. I create life! I have more in common with a dog than I have with you. I love dogs. I've always loved dogs. Guess what also made the list? Tron. Yeah, because that's super hopeful, isn't it? Honestly, I just think that people got confused because a lot of the movies that were actually featured were just spoof movies. You know, I'm, I know that Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure is indeed excellent. Excellent! Execute them, bogus. But at the same time, it's not really what you consider to be like a futuristic <laughs> movie, you know? Even looking way back to the start of cinema, the first feature-length sci-fi movie was called Metropolis and that was released in 1927. That was actually dystopian too. It featured the working class powering the technology for the upper class. And then you think about all the other sort of sci-fi futuristic movies. Think of Blade Runner, The Terminator series, 2001 A Space Odyssey, Tron, all the way to the 2000s with Minority Report, um, which I do sometimes feel like we're living in as well. They did get the targeted ads part very correct, right? It's a bit creepy. In the 2000s, futuristic movies tended to lean on the dystopian side until you got to the 2010s, where YA novels were being made into a lot of movies, and I think that you'll recognise this symbol as soon as I put it up. You've got the Hunger Games series, you've got Maze Runner, you've got the Divergent series, you've got Ready Player One, <laughs> and then even if you're looking at movies aimed at adults, you've got things like Elysium, In Time. In my opinion, you can put the Marvel movies into this category too, and the subsequent fatigue from them because there are so many Marvel movies, oh my gosh. Then you include movies like The Martian, Interstellar, Moonfall, both versions, even the rom-com version is a dystopia. They are all bleak, and I've been racking my brain trying to think about a positive futuristic movie, and the only one I could think of was actually one of my faves, which is Wally. But that's one of the only movies I could think of, other than also Strange World, which did get released this year. Then let's think about some TV shows. So you've got Black Mirror, Snowpiercer, Arcane, The 100, all of which we've watched. Um, I mean, they're good, but they're not exactly 
hopeful, are they? I was trying to think about hopeful futuristic TV shows. Um, I came across The Expanse, but we don't have anything to do with Amazon in this house, so I haven't watched it. But the only other show I could think of was Star Trek, which I do think technically falls into the hopeful future, but that's only after they go through total dystopia, right? Um, go check out Jesse Gender's channel if you are at all a Trekkie, because they've got, like, everything about it. Um, I only watched it when I was a kid because I've got an older brother. I remember things like Khan and Tribbles and I remember the Whale movie because that one was my favourite out of all of them. Basically most of what I remember from Star Trek are meme moments um, so I'm not very well versed. There's such a distinct desperation and lack of hope. The wealth gap is often extreme. Architecture is brutalist or dilapidated. Nature is rare. Relationships are fractured or non-existent which means that people turn to technology for comfort. Colours are dark or smoggy, people are desperate to escape to where the rich are, or in some cases, you know, bring the rich down in a David versus Goliath thing. But community overall is gone, for lack of a better word. Majority of the time it comes down to the chosen one and their dispensable counterparts with maybe a love interest or two. Mostly it comes down to one person to rise above it all and they get pedestal, showing off the rugged individualism which is kept so alive by the American dream. They maybe be saved whilst many die along the way. It's main character syndrome against the backdrop of grimness. And that's not just because they rush the poor CGI artists, meaning that everything needs to be dark, even though Disney is very guilty of this. For the uninitiated, let's talk about what Solarpunk is. So from solarpunk.net, Solarpunk is a movement in speculative fiction, art, fashion and activism that seeks to answer and embody the question, what does a sustainable civilization look like and how can we get there? The aesthetics of Solarpunk merge the practical with the beautiful, the well designed with the green and wild, the bright and colourful with the earthy and solid. Solarpunk can be utopian, just optimistic or concerned with the struggles en route to a better world but it's never dystopian. And I really feel like this is a thing that's actually missing from futuristic movies. It's community created, decentralized, very much in line with nature, and the whole point is about accessibility. And if you watch my ableism video, you'll be very passionate about this. Since it is a subgenre, it is open to interpretation, as it is still fairly new, because it was only kind of born in 2008, which was not all that long ago. It does get raised quite often in Solarpunk, at least from what I've been reading, the similarities between Solarpunk and indigenous cultures from different places around the world. A lot of influences come from parts of Africa and across Asia. Um, but again, this is just one of the things which uh, I, I think some countries are starting to actually come to terms with the fact that, I don't know, maybe the people that were here first before colonization happened should be the ones to, you know, have the actual say in what happens with the land. Um, but hey, like, we're still struggling with that here in Aotearoa. And we also can't forget the issue of fetishizing indigenous cultures around the world and almost creating monoliths, like Avatar is a prime example of many issues with this. And it's something that we need to be wary of when it comes to creating solar punk content. As with all movies, it's just a particular issue in this area as people have raised as well. It's rooted in practicality, inventiveness and transformation, using what's already there and changing it to be better. It's not about buying new and shiny because I'm sure that some of you may be thinking about those nice new apartment buildings that get built with their wonderful greenery sort of spilling down but like those, those new fancy apartments that are being built are actually pretty wasteful. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that they're not as great as what they may appear. <laughs> now, you may have heard of Andrewism on YouTube, but they've done a bunch of videos all about solar punk, so I will have their videos linked for you down below. And a bunch of you also recommended them in my community poll too, so thank you very much for that. Now, you may have heard all of that and been like, that doesn't sound very punk at all. But the thing that is so radical about this is in a world of despair and apathy, actually having active hope is pretty revolutionary. According to Stanford researchers, exposure to unhealthy levels of wildfire smoke for several days is the equivalent of smoking seven cigarettes a day if someone were outside the entire time. 
The lack of hope for the future. It is no secret that the climate crisis is kind of already here to be honest with you and wreaking a lot of havoc. We're already seeing thousands of migrants die as they're trying to flee from countries to get to somewhere safer and yet the news just talks about these five billionaires that go down in like this kind of makeshift submarine thing which was actually created to allow the person that owned the company to find ways to do deep sea oil drilling in order to make more money. We're dealing with a cost of living crisis globally, like wages have stagnated and in real terms reversed in a lot of cases to be honest with you. And we're also still dealing with the fact that uh, Rona is rampant around the place and people keep on passing away from it but nobody seems to care. Living conditions keep on worsening for people and the wealth gap just keeps growing to an ungodly level. And as Disastrous weather events keep happening, ranging from wildfires to floods to heat waves killing crops and people. Things are grim, my dude. And the only lens we've been fed for the future is predominantly all of this, but worse. It's just automatically assumed that everything's going to be worse, but you know, ooh, there's cool tech that you could be using that will be following you. We're already using it now. <laughs> It is no wonder to me that people are feeling terrible if their form of escapism is just constantly showing them dystopia after dystopia. When you're only shown a few people being able to rise above the ranks of an authoritarian regime when many die along the way, like, it's very depressing. I know that Strange World from Disney kind of created a solar punk world. It was pretty cute. I mean, it does have its flaws, but I actually left the movie not feeling emotionally drained, so I will count that as a huge win. The reason there's a need for solar punk movies in media is it gives tangible hope, because it's really inventive, it's easily scalable, and it works best by working with others and catering to needs by using what's already there and changing its purpose. It's distinctively anti-capitalism, as it's about mending and making do. Forced obsolescence to sell another phone because you can't replace the battery is gone. And it's not about demonising tech either. Like, you know Wakanda? That's solar punk. It all sounds great, right? Because it is, and that's the thing which I really think is missing, because there's actual active hope and action that has taken place in order to get these places there, as opposed to, I don't know, just showing our actual future with what late stage capitalism will really do to us. I want about movies which aren't just about individualism, they're actually about multiple people all at once, you know, like ensemble casts, which you may say it's really hard to do ensemble movies, but it can be done my friend, it can indeed be done, because the thing is it's meant to be about a collective as opposed to just holding one person up as a saviour because that's not how the real world works. The real world works when all of us work together. The reason I think that we're not seeing movies like this is because who wants to fund movies where capitalism is brought down by a collective and the status quo is not replaced? People actually choose to go with less fleshy things in the future. They choose to forego a bunch of stuff in order to make Make sure that everybody can survive. They choose to share more. Like, who? <laughs> what's that gonna sell? You know, um, then everyone will be claiming that it's like the Red Scare all over again, that it's all about communism and stuff. The Red Scare honestly made a huge impact on the way that media, on everything actually functions. There is so much room for creativity in these sorts of movies. You don't have to get rid of your aliens, you don't have to get rid of your political unrest between people. You still have your cool existential questions, you've still got your amazing gadgets. In particular, um, Princess Mononoke, which is a very hard watch by the way. People may be like, oh but it's animated, which means it's a kids movie um I still have nightmares about it okay <laughs> like it's a tough movie but it sticks with you it's so good because the way that it's been framed is you can really relate to all of the characters all of the strife all of the reasons behind it I really feel like there are so many more stories to be told in this sort of space but they just get completely overlooked because it doesn't fit in with the whole rugged individualism narrative and the status quo is good actually <laughs> the thing which helps us set that apart is the community and focus on actively keeping hope like in my mind at least like do you remember in 2020 when everybody sort of wanted to live their best cottage core life? People got into baking, into sewing, into painting, into knitting, into um, gardening and actually growing their own veggies and stuff. I really do feel like people are kind of like just itching for this sort of like solar punk world. Like that's why I'm saying like there is so much appetite for it and I know that movie studios will only make something if they think they can get money from it but 
honestly, I really do think that there is. Like, there is such a want for groundedness for community there was there is such a gaping hole for it which has just been filled with you know like memeable makeup and just like capitalism spitting out a whole bunch of stuff that's not even needed you know i don't need any luggage i'll go shopping with you we could hit the mall later i don't want to go shopping i don't want to hit the mall i will fix this bag and it will be fine all right i'll go shopping alone i can pick something out for you i appreciate the offer but i'm fine let's get on to my recommendations because you know that i like to end things with some sort of solutions and lucky for you if you are keen on the whole solar punk thing um you might be closer to actually contributing to it and starting to live it even in small ways than what you may think because it's all the stuff that I talk about all the time anyway whether it's mending things you have shopping second hand supporting local getting involved in your local community advocating for disability rights actually knowing about and getting involved with and supporting indigenous work in your area um, that is definitely a huge key thing because oh my gosh <laughs> and again I could go on about the issues here in Aotearoa for a very long time <laughs> also if you're a homeowner or your landlord is even possibly open to this um, get rid of the lawn and actually rewild it with native plants which can create a wonderful ecosystem um, and again when it comes to that community stuff that you can do community gardening can actually make a huge difference too like I said all of these sorts of things along with being involved politically they do actually help to create this sort of change that we want to see um I do obviously recognize the fact that that is a luxury that not everybody can afford because we are all incredibly time poor and I bring this up all the time because late stage capitalism super fun at draining everybody <laughs> when you're thinking of aesthetics wise if you like art nouveau then you'll probably love solar punk um i was also thinking like kind of clothing sort of vibe wise around the place think about your favorite historical girlies here on youtube whether that's rachel maxi carolina abby cox i mean honestly i'd almost be including makara tours in here as well because um you know the whole getting things off the side of the road and then upcycling them. Uh, that sort of like raccoon-like activity, very solar punk. There are so many other things that you can do and I'll link some videos and resources down below for you if you want to get into this area a little further. Like I said, Andrewism is a fantastic channel to check out. The most radical thing about solar punk is the fact that it has active hope. It's not just dreaming, it is actively doing something to create hope. And I don't know if you've like volunteered at places, if you've helped people out and done like whatever sort of work, gotten involved in something that's a bit bigger. It's a really good thing for your own mental well-being as well because humans are social creatures and we want to be able to actually have those sorts of connections. So by finding ways to actually create that, you're helping everyone and also your, your little sad brain that is overwhelmed with all of the terribleness that's going on everywhere which we're always being notified of. So what movie recommendations do I have for you if you want to have like a nice futuristic movie to be able to watch? Um, obviously Wally, Strange World, um, Avatar gets mentioned a lot even though I've got quite a few problems with Avatar. <laughs> um, I'd rather watch Fern Gully to be honest with you. Princess Mononoke as mentioned before, Castle in the Sky, Black Panther, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, like Studio Ghibli is honestly just a really good place to go anyway um, if you ever want to have like that sort of connection to nature but you can't get out in nature it's something that um, I love to watch all the time because it's it's so atmospheric and it's it's great I love Studio Ghibli. <laughs> like there is just this huge space begging for this sort of storytelling and there is such an appetite and I really do think that even if we're thinking from a capitalist perspective because of course that's what movie studios think of I know that people love to hate watch and to dunk on things all the time even if people didn't like solar punk movies they wanted to mock them or whatever it's like okay that's fine but at least they're not making people feel like the world is crumbling around them afterwards like there could be constructive criticism about oh this practically wouldn't work but what if we did this instead like those sorts of conversations could be started by actually creating this art obviously i'd love to have independent um filmmakers be able to do this sort of stuff too but i also recognize um making movies cost so many millions of dollars so that's why i'm more saying like big network studio things like there is such a space here that should be taken advantage of um and i think could actually work really well 
If you've got other recommendations for people, whether it's people's channels or movies or TV shows or things that people can do to kind of like get that whole solar punk kind of vibe, um, list them down below in the comments. If you did make it all the way to the end, please leave your favourite plant emoji because uh, we all have one, obviously. Um, it could be a flower, if you like flowers, it could be a different kind of plant, just please not eggplants. I hope that you love this, have a wonderful rest of your week, and I'll see you again soon. Bye! Okay, okay, oh, oh, oh no, oh no. Okay, yep, we work together, yep, we got it. <laughs>